Hey guys, my name is Stan. Welcome back to my channel. I am a little bit sick today, so I apologize for the sound of my voice. And if I have to sneeze, I probably will. Anyways, long story short, I'm not writing. It's winter time in Canada, and I am sitting next to my computer giving you this little After Effects uh, Christmas present. <laughs> another one I guess but actually this video is uh, nothing more nothing less than a thank you to a motor vlogger I enjoy watching who was kind enough and uh, did an interview with me and his name is downshift 83 thanks man I really appreciate your time and I want to sort of show you uh, what, 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 what can be done with a video I'm sure you know this but um, I am in an interview. I remember you were telling me how obviously you don't spend much time on um, color correction and sort of making the video look pretty. And I was surprised because a lot or most of your videos actually look very uh, bright and the colors are bang on. However, I found a video that. Uh, we can still improve. I think there was a photo session that uh, you, a downshift you were doing. I'm gonna just talk directly to you because hopefully you'll be watching anyways. So you can recognize this, the making the shot video. And I only took about 15 seconds of footage that we're gonna be working on today. So why don't we actually get started? Because I wanna shut up and get started already. So, okay, let's call this downshift 83. Um, how about this shot? Downshift 83 shot. I want this anamorphic, and it's already anamorphic. Uh, what does that mean? Um, it means it's just a very wide screen. Uh, that's correct ratio for anamorphic 2.35. Essentially, you divide this number by that, and that's what you get. Square pixels is fine. I'm not going to change the frame rate, even though it should be 24. Uh, but YouTube does not accept 24. It always converts back to 29.97, and if we keep it at 24, it will be crap. Anyways, that's what anamorphic is. It's a widescreen. Get the footage, drop it in. Here we go. It already looks nice. Um, let's look at the original footage. Uh, where the heck is it? Here. Right? So that's an original footage. Yeah, it's 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 obviously it's nice as it is, uh, but look at it from this angle. Look, I mean, it's going to be black on top and bottom. It'll be just like a very widescreen display sort of thing. Now, one thing I've noticed in these 15 seconds of footage, um, uh, whoever was holding the camera, um, it's not easy. Obviously, the hands were shaking a little bit. There's a little bit of uh, blurriness and so on and so forth going on. So. First things first, what I want to do is, well, why the heck is my comp so big? Uh, let's make it properly short. Uh, let's see. Trim to comp, I want to make sure. Did I cut off a little bit more than I wanted to? Okay. Let's do that again. 14 seconds. Yeah, I think I cut off a little bit extra, so let's be careful this time. Here we go. That's better. Trim to comp, and we've got our how many seconds? Like 15 seconds of footage, and that's perfect. All right. Go back to the beginning. First things first, what I want to do is I want to stabilize this. So effects and presets, I want the warp stabilizer. And let's find that. Here we go. Drop that onto the footage. It's going to analyze and stabilize. It's going to take five minutes, I think. Um, I'm not going to make you wait, so we're going to come back in a second. All right, now that the stabilization is almost complete, it's now actually stabilizing. It's going to take another second. It should not be jerky anymore. It would still be smooth. Uh, here we go. Yeah, you can see how it zoomed in. Uh, that's that's what it was supposed to do. Anyways, we're not going to be 
sort of reviewing this just yet. And what I want to do instead, come on, you can do it. Come on, to the beginning you go. Okay, very good. What I want to do instead is uh, create an adjustment layer. Uh, adjustment layer, here we go. And I want to rename this layer to um, Blur. All right, see if we can do this. Um, blur, camera lens, I want the camera lens blur. Where the heck is, here we go, camera lens blur. All right, you can see how everything is now very blurry. Um, that's fine. What I want to do now is to get my pen tool and roughly sketch out the area that I don't want to be blurry. Something like that. Now I say roughly because I don't want that. That's okay. Actually, fine. I can move that after. There's motion involved in this uh, little clip, so downshift is going to be moving forward a little bit, and that's going to be a little problem we'll have to solve. All right, so that's our mask. You can see downshift is very blurry now, and everything else is not. Uh, let's go and adjust the mask accordingly or properly, whatever you want to call it. Invert that uh, and feather, feather the mask, I don't know, like 40 maybe, 40, 39, doesn't matter, should be good. All right, that's good enough. Okay, we're done with the blur. Now we need to do another adjustment layer. Okay, let's do another adjustment layer and we're gonna call this one looks. I, I usually call it looks because that's what I'm looking for here. And it is magic bullet looks. It's an add-on to After Effects. It's not, doesn't come stock, if you will. But what it does, it actually allows you to click a few times and get the coolest ever uh, picture you will ever see anywhere. Um, <laughs> oh, geez, look at that. That's That's actually pretty cool. Blockbuster. I like that too, but Buffalo actually works really, really well. Um, yeah. Invasion. Buffalo. Buffalo it is. Uh, let's make a few adjustments if we want to. Maybe a vignette. I think it'd be nice to add a vignette. Make that smaller make that bigger and saturate that son of a like that all right and like that I think it looks really cool I think it looks amazing actually I take that back <laughs> all right I think we're gonna leave it as is for now We've done a few clicks and our footage is looking amazing already. I mean, yes, you have to wait a few minutes to for warp to finish and for other stuff to finish, but we haven't finished yet. Uh, what I want to do is I want to be able to track motion because see what happens at 11 seconds downshift being a mobile as he is on a motorcycle, he moves out of our mask and messes everything up. Oh, actually, our mask is not even here, it's here. So you can see how the mask is here and he's here. So we need to hook up the mask to the movement. And for that, uh, we need to track something. And what are we going to track? We're going to track motion of this little red dot, I think. Um, okay. All right, zoom in on this. All right, so this little square signifies 
the object so you have to put it as close to the object you're tracking as possible and the second square uh, sort of defines the search area in the next frame so you have to make sure that this object does not move too far away or with moves within this distance anyways it, that's complicated even for me um, so <laughs> I'm gonna start tracking and let's go from there all right here we go we got our tracking data and as you can see this little sticker I think it is a sticker it moved back and forth on the screen and this is our original composition uh, just so you know and this is what we came up with so now the idea is to make sure the mask that we've created here moves along with the motion tracking we just did and then to do that we go to tracker and hook it up to the image we already tracked this now it's currently targeting looks which has nothing to do with what we are trying to achieve so let's change it blur okay and we don't need to rotate or scale we just need to change a position so let's apply on both axes and cross her fingers here we go why did it just jump like that all right we're not going to pay attention to that it didn't happen it never happened okay we're going to assume it's going to work fine all right i think we're done with after effects let's just export this baby out and continue on in premiere pro see what we can do there all right so here we are in uh, premiere pro and i just want to highlight what i did so far i've created i've brought in the composition we've created which is right here and i've created uh, sorry i've created a composition out of the clip and i'm using misshift edit um we got another video found on to downshift 83's channel uh, misshift edit i'm just using a piece of audio um i don't know for just want to make sure they sort of matches uh, what downshift is all about. He's using it, so I guess I can I can attach it and hope hope uh, he he actually likes it. <laughs> okay, I really don't mind how this turned out. Actually, um, I could have included some shakes in the video, but you know what? It's just, it's already turning out to be a quite long ass video on my part. So let's produce it and. I'll give that to downshift83. He will do what he will with that piece of uh, footage. And uh, the tutorial will be on my channel. Alright guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in a bit.